Okay. Hi, I'm Margaret Carter, one of the chemistry instructors at Lambton College, and I'll be demonstrating anion analysis for you. It's part of the laboratory component of Chemistry 1106. In this analysis, we're going to um, analyze six very common anions. Three of them are halides, chlorine, bromine, and iodine. And then we're also going to analyze for sulfate, nitrate, and acetate. These are ions that you'll find in normal tap water and in everyday living. We start with samples that we know have these ions in them so that you can see what it looks like to get a positive test. So we're going to start by putting a few drops, three or four drops of each solution into its own test tube. That was the chloride. This is the bromide. And I'm going to make sure that I keep some sort of organization between the um, source bottle, bottle where the solution came from, and the test tube. That's so that I don't get any of the test tubes mixed up. If you're not good at doing that, you should think about labeling your test tubes either with a grease pencil or sometimes a piece of tape on your glassware works very well. Notice that I never I take care never to touch the test tube with the tip of the dropper. That would contaminate the entire bottle, the entire sample. So there I have a little bit of each solution with a known ion in it in my test tube. This first procedure um, distinguishes between halides and other ions. So the bromine, the chlorine, and the iodine should react in this, in this uh, first step and the others will not react. So we add to each of the test tube two drops of silver nitrate. On the bench top, um, in front of me here, there are a whole selection of reactants, reagents, and everything you will need for this experiment would be set out for you in advance. And you can see very clearly here, the chlorine has a very clean white precipitate. The bromine is a little bit off-white, again, a precipitate. And iodine also a precipitate, almost a yellow color. Whereas the sulfate is still clear. as is the nitrate. The acetate looks a little bit cloudy, but there is no precipitate. So this is a, is a screening test for halides. If you get a precipitate, you're dealing with a halide. If you don't, you're dealing with one of the other ions. Now we're going to go continue and analyze for each of the ions specifically. I'm just going to turn this around to get us some new fresh test tubes. First we're going to test for sulfate. I'm going to put about five drops 
of my known solution into the test tube. Now I need to add two drops of six molar nitric acid. Six molar nitric acid is also on the bench for you. And we're told to mix that. There's two ways we can do that. We can either cover the test tube with something, not your finger, um, and, and to, um, shake it by hand. Or you can use a pipette and just draw it in and out of the pipette until you're, you're satisfied that it's well mixed. It's handy to have collected some beakers to use to collect your glass waste and your liquid waste ahead of time. It will save you some walking in the lab. Our next step is to add 5 drops of 0.5 molar barium nitrate. And you can see that we now have a white precipitate, which is a confirmation, a positive test for sulfate ion in solution. The next test is for acetate. I'm going to put about one mil into the beaker, or into the test tube. Which is about one centimeter of liquid on the bottom. So to the acetate test tube we're going to add iron chloride hexahydrate. That's iron 3 chloride. And you never want to um, take something directly out of the, the source, the main container that contains it. You should always put something in a small watch glass, that's what that is, or a beaker, and you take what you're going to use from this, and when you're done with this, it is disposed of. You never put it back into the source container, because if this somehow becomes contaminated, and you put it back in there, the entire bottle is contaminated and the losses are much greater. So I'm going to take a small crystal of, of the iron chloride and add that to my acetate. Now it, it's in the bottom it's dissolving and you can sort of see there's color in the bottom and it goes to clear at the top. Now we need to heat this solution and that's going to take a little bit of time. That's 